Taking your first cruise, the only thing that can match the excitement of an upcoming vacation is the overwhelmed feeling that comes with trying to navigate and plan for your first sailing. That's why I have taken the time to round up a boatload, or should I say a shipload, of tips and things to know that will help you prepare for your trip. When you go through check-in, you'll receive the key to your room. This key, it's actually like a credit card that you slide into your cabin door to unlock it, but it also does a lot more. It is also linked to your shipboard account and you'll use your room key just like a credit card to charge items to your account. No matter if you are buying a drink or a souvenir on one of the ships, you'll use this card to pay. The only time you'll use cash is when you are off the ship in port or if you wanna gamble on board. This is much more convenient than having to carry around dollar bills. Just be sure to keep a close hold on that card. Wondering if you should get an interior cabin or a balcony room? Don't sweat it. Balconies, they are great, but there are some big advantages for interior cabins. As a first time cruiser, it's doubtful that you'll be spending much time in your room anyway, especially if you are taking a shorter cruise, as you will want to be out and about exploring. Having an interior cabin is a cheaper way to get on your first sailing without breaking the bank. When you prepare for your cruise, you're either assigned a boarding time or you get to choose one. Cruise lines designate a boarding time to avoid having everyone arrive at the port all at once to get on the ship. When boarding is open, many people try to get there as early as possible, leading to extremely long lines to get on the ship right at the start of boarding. Spreading out passengers helps to keep any one person from having to wait too long. What you don't want to do is to show up before your boarding time. Sure, you might be able to board early as they aren't usually too strict on timing, but you'll add to the crowds and there's also the likelihood that you'll be asked to wait until your designated time. That means that you'll just be hanging outside the terminal until you're finally allowed inside. One nice thing about cruises is that on many trips, they allow you to sail with only a birth certificate and a photo ID if the cruise begins and ends at the same port. If you don't have a passport, you can still leave the country and don't have to go through the hassle and the expense of obtaining one. Even so, it is much smarter to sail with a passport. Not only does it come in handy should you need to leave the ship early due to an emergency, but it can also save you time. These days, many ports use facial recognition that's matched with your passport photo for re-entering the country. You snap a photo and you're on your way out the terminal. Those with birth certificates, sometimes they still wait in line to be checked by a CBP officer. Headed to the Caribbean, it's likely that you'll visit several countries with several different currencies within just a few days. The good news is you don't have to think about converting currencies at each port. These ports that you visit, they thrive on tourism and make things easy for cruise passengers. They will all gladly accept US dollars and often take credit cards too. Just bring some smaller bills for your port days and you'll be all set. When you get on a ship, there's no shortage of places to spend your money. That's why I suggest passengers take advantage of any chance that they have to save a little bit of cash. Case in point, Carnival and Royal Caribbean, two of the biggest players in cruising, they allow you to bring on a small quantity of non-alcoholic drinks. Considering that soft drinks, we're talking sodas, water, things like that, they are about $3 each on a cruise. That can save you a nice chunk of change. Now, most people don't realize it, but the cruise lines will often bend over backwards to make you happy. Case in point, you can order multiple items from the dining room menu. So say that you want an appetizer, but you can't choose between two of them. Don't choose. Instead, just order them both. This makes it a great way to try new dishes that are out of your comfort zone. If you don't end up liking it, then there's no big loss since the dining room food is already included in your fare. Cruise lines know that people want to let loose and have a drink or 10 on their cruise. That's why they charge high prices for the booze. Still, most cruise lines, they allow you to bring aboard some alcohol when you embark at the start of your trip. It is very restrictive in that it's typically only a bottle or two of wine or champagne. Still, 
I do recommend taking advantage as it is much cheaper than buying the drinks once you are on the ship. If you've been tempted by the drink packages, do the math before you buy one. Drink packages, they seem like good deals, but the rules can make them quite pricey. For instance, many lines, they force each adult in the cabin to buy the package if any one adult buys it already, even if that second person doesn't want it. As well, you have to buy the package for the entire cruise. That means even on days when you are in port and not on the ship for most of the day, you're still paying for that drink package. Finally, with high daily prices, you usually have to drink between seven to 10 beverages each and every day you are on the cruise to come out ahead. For many passengers, they are actually better off buying drinks individually. If you're driving to the cruise port, then you should know that it doesn't get any more convenient than with the official port parking lots. They are typically right at the cruise terminal. So you unload your baggage and you head right to check-in. Of course, they do charge for that convenience. If you search for parking lots near the port, you can usually find independent lots that are nearly as convenient, but at a sharp discount to parking at the port. These lots almost always offer a free shuttle to drop you off right at the ship as well. In addition, if you were staying at a hotel before your cruise, many will offer discounted cruise parking. Tipping is a fact of life on a cruise. Cruise lines have included gratuities with your cruise fare, or they are charged daily to your onboard account so that they are taken care of automatically. That means when you eat in the free restaurants on the ship, like the buffet or the main dining room, there's no bill to pay or tip to leave. It can feel a little wrong the first time, but when you are done with dinner, you simply get up and walk out. Now, this doesn't go for those specialty restaurants where there is a fee. If you eat there, then you're expected to sign the bill and the gratuity is tacked on to the price. Now, there are horror stories after horror stories of people coming back from their cruise with unexpected cell phone charges. The reason is either they use their phone willingly without realizing that they are connected to a roaming tower, or their phone used data without their knowledge for things like updating apps or downloading messages. No matter the reason, you don't want to accidentally get dinged with a sky-high phone bill. Put your phone on airplane mode before your cruise leaves the shore. If you're worried about sounds traveling through the walls of your cabin, you should be. To be clear, the walls are not paper thin, so you won't hear the cabin next to you watching a TV at a normal volume. But if you were the type that makes a lot of noise, maybe enjoying your vacation with your partner perhaps, then you should try to keep it down. You'll also be able to hear people in the halls through the door, so keep it a little quieter when walking down the hall back to your room. Most passengers will eat their dinners in the main dining room on the ship, but they actually serve breakfast and lunch there too. The buffet, it's quick and easy for these meals, but the quality and the freshness I think it's usually lower than what you'll get in the dining rooms. So head over if you want something that's a little better, but just know that the meal, it does take a little longer to eat. Now it's not a big deal, so don't be self-conscious, but just so you don't sound like a Ricky Cruiser, it's good to understand some terminology. It is a cruise ship that you are sailing on. Calling it a boat during your trip may get you some funny looks. There's no real cutoff on what is considered a boat versus what is considered a ship, other than ships are known as large ocean-going vessels. There's no doubt that the size and scale of any cruise ship you sail will definitely put them firmly in the ship category. Have your heart set on Cozumel? Can't wait for that private island? Just know that cruise itineraries can change for any number of reasons, whether it be an issue with the ship weather, or even riots in the port, yes, this has happened. Often the cruise lines will try to sub one port for another, but it isn't unheard of for them just to scrap a port altogether. Keep this in mind that it's fairly rare occurrence, but it does happen. Now, if you are flying in for your cruise, then you're going to need a ride to the cruise port from the airport. Cruise lines, they're happy to offer the service for a price. All of the cruise lines, they will offer a shuttle that runs from the airport to the cruise port, but the catch is that they aren't really that great of a deal. For example, 
Carnival. They offer a ride from Miami International to the cruise port for about 23 bucks a person one way. The trip is only about 15 minutes and Uber costs about $20 for the entire car. In other words, a round trip on the cruise shuttle would cost more than $180 for a family of four, but only 50 bucks for an Uber or a Lyft. From portable fans to laptop and tablet chargers to night lights to curling irons, the need for outlets in a cruise cabin is always increasing. That's why I suggest bringing aboard an outlet adapter to plug in and give you more plug space. One thing to know, adapters with surge protectors, they are forbidden on a cruise ship. A simple multi-plug adapter is all you really need and it is worth its weight in gold. The cruise line might sell it as a private balcony, but there isn't a whole lot of privacy to be honest. Your balcony on your cabin will have walls that shield you from the adjoining rooms, but the walls often don't go from floor to ceiling. They can easily be looked under or above and someone could look around the side of them even by accident. Keep this in mind if you're out on the balcony when the mood for romance strikes. With upwards of 20 decks on some cruise ships going up and down via stairs, it is time consuming and tiring. But with so many people using the elevators, it's common to have to wait a while before you get one. That's why if you are only going up or down three decks or fewer, it's usually faster just to take the stairs. Plus, it will help you work off some of those buffet calories. Grab a drink from the bar, your bill will typically include a gratuity automatically. Keep this in mind and double check the itemized receipt before you sign, so there's often another line for additional write-in tips. Unless the service was simply above and beyond, there's no reason to give a second tip on your drink if you don't want to. Most of us, we are used to air travel, where you were charged sky-high fees for checking in baggage. Cruise ships are completely different. There are no fees for luggage and no hard rules on how much you can bring. It is a nice change of pace from flying, but don't go too crazy. Remember that even though you can bring more on board, you still have to lug all of that luggage around. Chances are high that you'll need to visit guest services at least once during your trip. If you do have to go to ask something about a reservation or your onboard account, try to time your visit to off hours. The desk, it's open 24 hours a day. Times like just before dinner can see long lines when you'd really rather be out enjoying yourself. Early in the morning, like before 8 a.m. and late at night, like after 11 p.m., these are the best times that see the shortest lines. Elevators are the heartbeat of the cruise ship with 4,000 cruise passengers and sometimes more trying to go up and down more than a dozen decks. Elevators are constantly busy no matter the time of day. That's why you should always wait to enter only after other people have gotten out. It's polite, but it also makes getting on and off much easier. Just stand far enough back to give people plenty of space to exit before you hop on. So if you have a pair of cheap flip-flops that you like wearing around the pool, then it is time to upgrade. Those foam sandals usually have slick bottoms that get worn down really easy. When you hit a puddle, it is easy to lose your grip and slip. On a ship, there are way too many places where you can slip and fall, especially around that pool deck. Upgrade to a pair that has a nice rubberized sole with plenty of tread. On the ship, the casino is a popular spot. There are familiar games, but the payouts are usually worse than what you may know on land. For example, on most ships, Blackjack is going to pay 6 to 5 instead of the usual 3 to 2. Craps games heavily limit the amount of odds bets that you can make. Video poker also has low payout tables in general. Head to the casino, enjoy yourself, but don't always think that you're getting a great deal. Now, even if you are headed to the sunny Caribbean, it's still a good idea to bring some warm clothes. When the ship is sailing and the sun has gone down, the combination of cooler temps and a strong breeze from the ship's movement, they make it downright chilly on deck. In addition, many spots around the ship are extremely well air conditioned, meaning you can be cool indoors as well. So if you want to have a calmer, quieter cruise, then look for trips that are seven days or more. Shorter cruises, which are less expensive overall, they tend to attract younger and more energetic crowds. 
That's not to say that it's going to be like going to Mardi Gras in New Orleans, but shorter cruises, especially those traveling during the summer months, they will definitely be a bit rowdier than what you'll see from a week long cruise. Your first thought when you see the prices of some shore excursions might be that they are expensive. It's not unusual for a shore excursion that is just three or four hours to run more than $100 per person. But I think this is one spot to splurge on your trip. Excursions, they give you a chance to do things that you won't have the opportunity to do anywhere else in the world. From exploring ancient ruins in Mexico to taking a submarine under the Caribbean. After your trip, you probably won't remember the money that you spent, but you will not forget the experience that you had. Want to check email, surf the web, or call or text back home? Prepare to pay. Out at sea, the only communication is via satellite. Every cruise ship will have packages that allow you to call or get web access. They charge a high price, often around $15 to $25 per day. And the connection speed it isn't anything to brag about. Want to save money? Book the internet or any other packages ahead of time for a discount. When you are in port, the all aboard time will be announced, posted as you leave the ship and mentioned in the daily planner. These times are not suggestions. You should be back on board by that time and not a moment later. The last thing you want to do is to be what's called a pier runner, who are those people running down the pier to the ship at last minute or worse, they miss the ship altogether. Now, if you think that bottle of tequila you just bought in Cozumel will make for a fun evening, think again. Just like at an embarkation, you can't bring bottles of booze from ports. Anything bought in port will be held on the ship and then delivered back to your stateroom the night before you leave. Thank you for watching. Before you go, I hope that you'll like and subscribe, all those good things. And real important, if you are about to cruise, then check out cruisely.com where I have tons of details on everything from parking to packing. You can also see more tips on this YouTube channel. Till next time, happy sailing.